Tony Stewart's going to be going real fast in 2024. The three-time NASCAR Cup Series champion will be going real fast, like I said, and won't be turning left. That's because he'll be taking over his wife's ride in NHRA's top fuel class next season as the two attempt to start a family. I don't know what's the crazier part of that sentence, the fact that Tony Stewart's going to be racing full-time in NHRA's top fuel class, or the fact that Tony Stewart's going to be a dad, neither of which I think any of us ever predicted happening. Of course, if you did listen to the Dale Jr. download earlier this year, Tony mentioned that he and Leah were, you know, discussing the possibility of starting a family sometime in the future and he was going to go to Dale for advice. Well, it sounds like he's going to have to go to Dale for some advice because they're going to attempt to have a family. And certainly that's one way to get a ride, right? We've seen drivers steal other drivers' rides before, but impregnating your wife is a new tactic and one I don't think we'll ever see happen again. Ricky had a chance to do that to Danica at SHR and didn't pull the trigger, probably for the best, or else he'd been converted into a flat earther and rubbing crystals for the rest of his life sidetrack there. But for Tony Stewart, he'll now be the 2024 Rookie of the Year candidate in NHRA, like it's 1999 all over again. It does kind of cement him as the most versatile race car driver of this generation. I mean, the guy is a three-time NASCAR Cup Series champion, winner in the NASCAR Cup Series, Xfinity Series. He's an IndyCar champion, winner on the IndyCar circuit, dirt uh, track winner in you know, wing sprints and non-wing sprints as well. He's a top alcohol winner as well in NHRA, and now he's going to try to win a top fuel championship or races for that matter. So the guy has literally kind of driven everything. I mean, heck, he even drove Lewis Hamilton's Formula One car around Watkins Glen one time in, you know, a bit of damp conditions there. So the guy's driven a lot of things. He did say that driving a top fuel car scares the hell out of him, which... Yeah, I mean, if you've ever been to an NHRA race before, just sitting in the stands kind of scares the crap out of you the first time one of those goes down the track and you feel like your entire body is shaking to its core. If you haven't been to an NHRA event, I highly recommend going. One, the access is incredible. For like $40, you can just walk anywhere you want, watch all of this, go down to the pits, hang out with the drivers, make your eyes cry. Uh, because of the exhaust coming out of the cars, and then you can go watch them go, and the first time a nitro car goes down the track, it, like I said, shakes you to your core and makes you wonder, why did I pay to come do this? It's a great feeling, though, after the first time, and make sure you record somebody if they've never been before, because they will be taken aback. They'll be floored by how just insanely loud it is. But Tony Stewart will be making a full-time run at the Top Fuel Championship next year. And he's doing it for his own team. Tony Stewart Racing is, of course, a championship-caliber team. They just won the Funny Car Championship in 2023 with Matt Hagen. Leah Pruitt, in the same car that Tony Stewart is taking over, contended for the championship all the way down to the final race this year as well. Both teams are multiple race winners. Both teams are championship contenders. And now Tony Stewart, at 52 years old, is going to be hopping into one of those cars and trying to get it done. And when I say 52 years old, that's not a slight. I'm just mentioning his, his age because John Force is in his 70s, and that guy's still out there winning races. So there's nothing to say Tony can't just make a 20-year career out of this. I don't think he will, but it does make some sense why he sold off the All-Star Circuit of Champions to Kyle Larson and Brad Sweet and kind of freed up some more of his time here and definitely took on a little bit more capital as well so he could pad that bank account because I don't have kids, but I've heard they're not cheap somewhere in the hundreds of thousands of dollar range uh, over the course of their life, which doesn't sound great, honestly. Regardless, he's going to race top fuel, which is really cool at the end of the day. Like we said, uh, I said a couple of videos ago, I want to see more drivers do crossovers. I want to see drivers try out different disciplines, not just test a car, go out there and actually race it. And Tony Stewart's going out there and racing it. He's going to join the top class in NHRA and go for it. We saw Kurt Busch make not the full-time switch, but he raced in pro stock on the Gator Nationals a few years back when he had Pennzoil slash Shell as a sponsor. And it was cool to see him go out there and actually compete in the event, not just show up and like, oh, I'm going to make just a, a show run down the track here. No, he went out there and tried to compete. And Tony Stewart's trying to do the same thing, just on a much bigger scale and at much higher speeds. When NHRA announced that this was going to be a historic announcement, I think everybody was like, ah, was this going to be like NFTs again or anything like that? Some people were hoping that they would go back to the quarter mile. They're never going to go back to quarter mile. Unfortunately, those days are long gone because a lot of the tracks that they race at just can't be retrofitted to have enough runoff at the end of them to make it safe. So we're going to be going to a thousand foot, I think, for forever. 
But Tony Stewart joining is a bit of a historic announcement, right? You're getting one of the biggest names in motorsports to join your series full time. And that's going to bring people to the racetrack at the end of the day. NHRA definitely has a bit of a funding problem. Sure, they have sponsors, but drag racing is really expensive. The ROI on drag racing, it can't be great. I've never dug into the numbers, but when you just sit down and look at how many parts they go through each weekend, how many blocks they're going through, how much it costs to do all this, you're like, how is anybody making money? Or how does any of this make any sort of sense? And it doesn't sometimes. But having Tony Stewart come to your race, and race full time to your, in your series rather, and race full time, that's going to bring people out. It's the same way like when Kyle Larson shows up to a local dirt track. Same with Tony Stewart when he used to show up to local dirt tracks. It brings out more fans because they're like, oh, I want to see this big name guy that I've seen race on TV, whether that be NASCAR, IndyCar, anything like that. They want to see those guys come out there and race and they're going to get the opportunity to do that. So Tony Stewart's probably going to help bring people to the racetrack, which at the end of the day, that is a promoter's dream and the NHRA probably has to be super thankful for that. So we'll see Tony get underway at the start of the season. I believe at the Gator Nationals in March, there's also a million dollar race purse wise uh, at Bradenton Motorsport Park in February that will be on Flow Racing. I'm not being paid to say that. I'm just throwing this out there. Leah Pruitt will race that event in this car before stepping out and handing it over to Tony uh, for the NHRA season as they attempt to get pregnant. It's a humble brag by Tony Stewart to be like, I'm going to be getting a lot of action, uh, which, hey, hats off to you. Congrats on that. I will say this. I did see uh, Jennifer Fryer from the AP did post that uh, the fertility journey for Leah Pruitt and Tony Stewart is a bit of a struggle. So hopefully that, you know, gets taken care of and they find solutions for that or whatever medical uh, causes they need to or approaches that they need to take for that. Hopefully they are able to do that because they do both seem like they are, you know, obviously they both want to be parents, but they probably be great parents at that. So hopefully all of that takes care of itself. I know we all made jokes on social about like, hey, Tony, congrats on, you know, everything like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, hopefully their fertility journey does go well. They do end up with a kid, kids, however many they want, because Tony Stewart as a dad, even though he'll be 53, 52, would probably be a pretty badass dad for, for this future kid. There'll definitely be some sort of motorsports in their future more than likely. It would be crazy if they were like, oh yeah, this is Tony Stewart's kid. He's uh, trying out for the, the golf team in college. It's like, what? That's not what we expected out of this. But let the kids chase their own dreams, right? That's what they say. Regardless, happy for Tony Stewart. It'd be really interesting to see. More people are definitely going to be tuning into NHRA this year. Uh, happy for Leah to be able to make this decision and do all of that. And happy for NHRA because, like I said, they just landed a huge uh, whale, if you will. So, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.